Hello and welcome to the Matt Lagore Show. I am your host, Matt Lagore. In this day and age we live in today, I would say it's safe for me to say that worry is somewhat of an epidemic among people. People worry about everything, and they worry about things they have no control over, and they even worry about things they do have control over. And worry is somewhat like a a bad cold. It's very contagious. Uh, If you're around someone who worries, it's easily to get into that frame of mind and worry yourself. And if somebody has a really bad case of worry, they're like talking to a crazy person. There is nothing you can do to change their mind. They will have an answer for everything you say. So here at the Matt Lagore Show, I don't like to talk about worries because worrying is uh, kind of like feeling guilty. It's a wasted emotion. It will do you no good. It'll get you nowhere. But our mind does work in a way where we have concerns and we do worry about certain things. It's about survival really when it gets down to it. So it is necessary to a point. But I like to say you should worry about the things that you have control over or worry about yourself instead of worrying about somebody else. So when I was thinking about this, I was like, what are two things that concern us as human beings the most? What are two major points? And I think one of them would be, do I have enough money? Am I successful? Am I doing the best I can? Can I improve in my business or in my career? very healthy way thing to think about. The other thing that we might worry about is, oh my God, I really hope that pair of pants fits for that wedding I'm coming up to because I got to put a suit on. Oh man, I'm really worried about my physical appearance, my physical health. Those are things that we worry about. Again, a big concern and rightfully so. What really makes you feel the best in life? when you're successful monetarily and business-wise, and when you're fit and healthy. Nothing makes you feel better when you look in that mirror and you see yourself looking good, right? Now, what is the way to overcome a worry or a concern? Or maybe, maybe you're having trouble in those areas. I think the best thing to do would be to talk to someone who's successful at that, successful at fitness and successful at business. So, I like to bring people on who are successful at what they do. Because when you talk to a successful person, it makes you feel like you can. It makes you feel like you can do it too. And today, I have someone on my show who is successful at both and helps many people be successful at both. His name is Ed Soul. Ed, thank you for being on my show. Hi, Matt. How are you? Ed is the owner of Beverly Athletic Club and Cambridge Athletic Club. So, Ed, just tell us just a quick, a little bit about your business. Sure. Uh, basically, I was actually the uh, general manager over at Cambridge Athletic Club uh, pretty much from about 28 years old until I was about 45 or so. That opportunity I had a great opportunity to purchase the club. And I think I got that because the owners that were there wanted to continue the way that it was with really emphasis on service and helping people. I come out of the restaurant business prior to that, so it was actually kind of a good mold for me to understand what those needs were. And since then, I've learned quite a bit. I, uh, you know, fitness has changed over the years quite a bit as well, but it still breaks down to basically treating the customer right, helping them achieve their goals, helping them set their goals as well. Mm-hmm. In both clubs, basically, we bring people on. Basically, I have great staff in both clubs. That is what we teach them from the very beginning. That it's really all about changing people's lives for the better through health, through wellness, through education, through programs, through equipment. Um, you know, and it definitely is the easiest way to do that because when you join a club like I believe ours are, you know, you build relationships. Um, I've seen many marriages come out of my clubs. I've seen people lose 150 pounds. I've seen people basically change their whole persona because they change their lives. And that's what our job is at the club is to help people in the community, our members make huge lifestyle changes. Love to do that to more people. That's what our goal is, is to change as many people as we can to improve their lives. So the best way to actually see about the clubs that we have is we have two websites. Um, Really, the best thing to do is come into the clubs and try them out. But the websites are beverlyathletic.com and cambridgeathletic.com for each club retrospectively. So if you check, go on those websites, there's an opportunity to actually get a free trial to the club. You can come in, you can get a workout, take a class. Um, get a feel for the club, and hopefully you love it enough that we can help you make your lifestyle changes that you want. 
Wow, that sounds awesome. Thanks. Not only can I get in shape and feel better, but I can find a, a wife or, or a husband. If that's what you're looking for. If you have a wife or a husband, you should have them join with you. Actually. Yeah, well, I understand that. I'm just, I'm just talking. I'm just yeah. saying in general. I think that's a, that, but you know, I never, you don't think about it that way. Right. But that is a place you, you see the same people. Most people are on the same schedule, right? And they have but, the same goals. Yeah, they care about the health. They care about their fitness. So that's, you know, it's an ideal environment. You actually have a nephew, actually, uh, basically, who is now going to a new relationship and his last one. And I said, you know. Maybe you want to go to CrossFit. That's your lifestyle down in Florida. That's what you're looking for. You're not going to find that girl, basically, that's going to fit that lifestyle and keep you there and help, you know, or not have to change her. If basically, if you're looking at basically, you know, the local restaurant, bar type thing mm -hmm. and stuff like that, you know, it's a great place to find people with similar interests and also to grow your interest as a couple. If you're not doing it, everybody needs to work out. Yeah. So I want to, I got a bunch of questions for you. I have so many things running through my head right now. But the first question I want to ask you is, were you like a fitness person? Were you a, a kind of person that loved to exercise and then started working in a club? How did that come about? How did you get into the fitness business? Actually, honestly, it's kind of unusual. So I was actually managing restaurants. And managing restaurants is definitely not the fitness business. <laughs> At that point, basically, uh, going way back, I probably quit smoking for a couple of years. But I was a racquetball player at the time. Yeah. And a friend of mine basically was leaving his job. And I had the opportunity to come on board, basically, as a food and beverage manager there and open a restaurant for them. Mm -hmm. So I took that opportunity. That eventually moved to me actually becoming basically the person that was the... Um, uh, general manager down the road, and basically at that point, you know, basically just from just knowing other owners, other managers, I learned a lot. We made some changes in the club, and we actually turned it from being not so successful as a racquetball club to still the most popular racquetball club in the area, but also really putting the, the whole emphasis on just fitness, you know, doing some strength training, you know, aerobic classes, things like that. And then basically things changed over time. And, more trainers, coaches coming in, and it just developed, and then I had the opportunity to purchase it. Um, so naturally, along the way, basically, I started exercising more. I think basically, uh, when I think I was still the general manager actually when I ran a marathon, things like that. So you know, I am into fitness. You know, I do try to exercise more days than not, like everybody else. I hit a slump once in a while, yeah. and basically, I've got to basically push myself out of it or get pushed out of it. One of the two. Well, it's easier for me. I'm in the club, so you know, basically the signs are there on a regular basis. But you do have, but you know, I still have a very busy schedule. I do a lot of things, so I, you still have to make time as an appointment for yourself to basically get it done. Well, you're fit though. You're staying fit, and I mean, the, I think half the battle is staying fit. Like you, you know, you yes. can you can get ripped and you can get really caught up and everything, but that takes a lot of effort. I think the goal is mainly stay fit. You know, stay as, stay as stay as healthy, stay flexible, be able to move. I mean, you know, I'm basically 64 years old right now. I'm hoping I can still be, you know, walking a golf course when I'm in my 80s. Mm -hmm. Actually, actually, uh, interesting. My um, my daughter-in-law, her grandfather just passed away actually about three weeks ago, and he was 91 years old. The last time he golfed was a year ago. He walked a par three, and he actually got a hole in one on his last hole. Wow. But really interesting. But you know, someone like that is what I want to strive to be able to keep that doing, and. That's a decision people have to make. You know, they can either basically do the right things now in their 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, even starting younger. But it preserves so much for down the road when you're in your 80s. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's important. Yeah, like my dad's 87. He still gets around. Walk. He's very, very uh, uh, limber, you know, and he always did. One thing, he never joined a gym. He was never that kind of person. But one thing he always did every night was he had this routine where he'd do about 25 push-ups, about 25 sit-ups, and some like light calisthenics. Every night he did that, and he's done that pretty much his whole life, either at night or in the morning. And you know that little bit definitely helped pay off over the years. You know? Are you following suit? Not like that. No, I mean I I'm, I kind of get into a slump, and then I go on a, yeah. uh, on, a on a on a on a real good routine, yeah. and I go on a slump. So I'd I'd like to eliminate the slump. Right. You know, or at least minimize the slump. But not. But I was thinking about it recently because you know I'm I'm 51, and uh, my dad was always doing something. And you know I'm physically active, but not like that. So I do need to make some improvements. So another reason why you're on my show, a little inspiration. You know, okay. hopefully I can inspire you. <laughs> and that's one of the things about you know having a personal trainer. A lot of our clients do two half hours per week, so it's more affordable for them. Yeah. But more importantly, it's accountability. It's getting you there. You know, you're paying for it, you have an appointment, 
either way, you're going to pay for it, so you do show up. They text you before your appointment. They call you mm -hmm. if you don't make it type thing. You know, they ask you what else you're doing along the way. Yeah. See, a lot of people need that accountability. Yeah. We're just so busy with everything else. Probably more than your dad was, yeah. more than my dad was. Sure. Yeah. Kind of a reverse story. My dad died at 51 because he didn't take great care of himself, really? yeah. which is part of what I think has had changed my view on the industry and health and wellness, the difference mm -hmm. between gyms and clubs. You know, all those things kind of come into play because, you know, I want to live a lot longer than that. Yeah. I, so I want to ask you a question. How many years have you owned clubs? Like how many years has it been right now? Uh, so I was 45. So I've owned clubs for 19 and I started working at a club basically. I was 28. So that would be uh, 36 years ago. 36 years. Okay. So you've been in it the majority of your life. Yes. And now I went to the Beverly Club. I met you up there. Right. What a beautiful place. Thank I you really very much. was impressed. Uh, you know, I expected it to be nice, but I, I really didn't expect it to be that nice. I can't take all the credit. I have really good staff. Sure. I have a good general manager. Yeah. They're really into the look and the appearance of the mm -hmm. place. You know, I mean, obviously I'm part of it, but, you know, it's the whole team that makes it really work. And the changes, because when I bought the club, basically, it was a lot of racquetball courts, and now we have none. You know, the last year racquetball courts became a huge personal training studio type thing, which is state of the art, which helps. Keep my trainers happy, keeps them on board. I have a lot of them for, have been there for six, seven, eight years. And they some of the clients they had seven or eight years ago because they're that good. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, and then basically the niceties we've added along the way, it's just really helped the business. So you've surrounded yourself with good people. Yeah, that's the secret. Yeah, it is the secret. I try to hire people smarter than me, yeah. better than me, and all But you that. don't tell them that. You just you just look at them and go, hey, I know he's smarter than me, but I, yeah, I don't know. Once in a while, they tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. So you don't you have the Beverly Club, the Beverly Athletic Club. You have yes. the Cambridge Athletic Club. Yes. Now, you, do you, do you, now, in those clubs, like I said, there's other amenities, but didn't you tell me you have like a couple of smaller clubs too? Yes. So basically, um, a few years, I'd say about, yeah, it's been... Eight years ago, I bought my first extra club. I bought a small satellite club, basically, that was in Beverly. Uh, mm -hmm. It was an area, somebody else went out of business. It was in a corporate setting over in the Cumming Center. So, you know, basically, they approached me. So we basically took that space over, and we just signed, signed an extension for another five years. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that was my first other club. So we there we had started the whole thing of being able to use one club or the other type thing, because that yeah. one's a 24-hour club, which helps a lot of people's lifestyle of, they can't squeeze time, you know, working late shifts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know, things like that, or even working the early shifts sometimes. So it kind of really, really kind of helped bring that market there and get us more in the corporate market in the Beverly area. And then basically we had the opportunity to take another couple of clubs in Cambridge. One was more of a corporate fitness center, which it still is. Then we took over another uh, fit core after in Technology Square. It's about a mile and a half from the club, as the other one is there too. And that's about a 10,000 square foot club. But it works out really well for us because we're kind of surrounding the areas that we're in and giving our members an option. Mm -hmm. So, wow. So you've got four places that you're running. Um, you know, the, and the, the, the clubs, the, especially the one in Beverly, is, it's large. You know, how many people, do you mind saying how many members you have? We have about 3,000 members, actually, in Beverly. 3,000 um, which in Beverly. Isn't, which isn't really a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, like a lot of you are basically lower-priced gyms. We'll have... 10,000 people in a smaller space. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the people aren't using the club probably quite as often. Some people do. There's no mm -hmm. doubts about it. Yeah. But basically, um, well, we are, you know, pretty much, you're using it if you're a member there, which is a great thing. But we have a lot of things going on at one time. At one time, we may have basically, you know, 20 people in an aqua class in the pool. We might have, you know, 25 people in a cycle class, or an RPM class at the club. We might have another 20 people basically uh, 30 people in a body pump class in the other studio. We might have, you know, eight people basically personal training with trainers in the fitness studio. Then we have people in the weight room in the other room because we have it all spread out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, it's it's extremely rare that somebody will really wait for anything in the club. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of what makes it a little bit different type thing. You can manage basically it's what you need is going to be available for you. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice to be able to go in and yeah. get the machine or the equipment you want yeah. right away. Right. And both clubs do a, a lot of group exercise classes because that really gears really well basically to people basically starting to get into a routine. Yeah. Because it's on your schedule that way. If you're going to be taking a 6.30 you know, body pump class, you know you want to be there at 6.15, get mm -hmm. ready and go in the club. Mm -hmm. If you're just going to work out on your own, it's a little bit harder to basically put that in your calendar and actually really fulfill, you know, commit to it and get it done. So 
if we do a lot with our group exercise programs in both, both club, major clubs. So, so you work with a lot. Now, I'm sure it works both ways, but you work with accountability on people. So that's one thing that's good because you're helping someone stay accountable. So they show up, they do their routine and feel better. But it also, so you don't have missed appointments and you don't have uh, a trainer sitting around doing nothing or not right. getting paid. or Right. So accountability, that's a big part of, of fitness, right? It, it's a huge part. You know, I mean, everybody would rather just take that pill mm -hmm. that does everything for them. That's, you know, if you watch TV, I would <laughs> yeah. say, you know, I generally fast forward through things, but if I'm not, I say two out of three commercials right now is for a pharmaceutical thing. There's all these side effects, yeah. but they're going to stop this issue or make that better or help you lose weight or reduce depression. You know, exercise does all of those same things, which is, you know, but, you know, it takes a little bit of work. But mm -hmm. if you build the habit and the habit stays, you know, you're not on as many pharmaceutical type things, you know, you're going to be healthier, you're going to get the same benefits, you're going to be happier. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Would you say that uh, out of like the people you talk to, how many people are self-motivated? If you took 100 people, how many can go to that gym and show up three times a week or four times a week and really be motivated? Well, if they're members of the club, they're already somewhat motivated, which right. is a good start. Right. Yeah. So you have to figure that only probably 20% 20, 20 of the people actually even go through the thing of joining a health club. Okay, yeah. And then there's probably, I think, another 10%, basically, that are your dad. Mm -hmm. They basically, they go out, they run, they walk, they do some exercises, they have something in their house. Mm -hmm. you know, and then you have probably 60, 70% of the people, basically, that really, you know, they think they do okay, they work hard for a living, but mm -hmm. most people don't. Most mm -hmm. people sit down all day long. Mm -hmm. You know, they just kind of go through life, they watch TV, they play on the computer, they go to work, they eat. And they're deconditioned. I mean, obesity in this country is a huge high level. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you go back 25 years, 30 years, it was no way near where it was. And I think it's just been changes in everything. I mean, yeah, the fitness clubs have come a long ways and gotten better, mm -hmm. but people haven't made the changes and all of the, you know, the food, the GMOs that people are eating, you know, I mean, you know, the diet soda that basically makes you heavier, all yeah. those things are kind of coming into effect and it's catching up with us. So, you know, I think people have sat waking up to realize we're going in the wrong direction and make that change. Yeah, yeah. You know, as kids basically, you know, I don't know, I went out and played till the streetlights came yeah, on. I yeah. think you did too. Yeah, yeah. Kids nowadays, it's on a TV. Yeah. You know, it's sad. It's very few kids you see going out playing in the neighborhood, you know, for a couple of hours at a time. Uh, a lot of kids just want to stay home and watch YouTube videos or, or right. play Sims uh, right. or something, you know. Oh, they're just in an organized sport where the parents drive them and stay yeah. there and stuff like that. They don't go out with their friends and, you know, pick up a, you know, a bat and a ball and a couple of gloves and go out and play three-on-three -three baseball like we did as kids. Oh, yeah. You know, I think about those are some of my happiest times, yeah. you know. And the, the, t the time went by so fast, you know. So it was, it, 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 it is a shame that in some parts, at some level, that's disappeared, but... But anyway, I want to go back to the business side of it. Like okay. you, you took you were a manager in Cambridge, and then you had an opportunity to buy it. Um, were, were you looking to buy a business? No, I was managing it. I was really fortunate. I had great owners there, and I had been with them basically at that point for about fourteen years. And I actually, I was the only person that really felt like I had ownership of the club. They just owned it. They owned yeah. a lot of real estate. They were very successful. They had done phenomenally well, and they actually sold the whole real estate package, which is a huge chunk of Kendall Square in Cambridge. Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously they didn't really need money at that point. They were very successful. And they didn't really want to be a tenant in a building that they had just sold as well. Mm -hmm. So at that point, they gave me the opportunity to purchase the club for, we won't disclose the amount of money, right. but it was a very, very attractive offer that mm -hmm. they gave me. They took care of everything for me, made it really easy. And then basically I just had the great fortune because a lot of things are luck. I yeah. mean, you know, sometimes I'd rather be lucky than good. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, at that time, Kendall Square changed over, got yeah. really busy, dot-coms were going in, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought, oh, you know, OMG, all of a sudden, boy, my whole life changed. I was, yeah. you know, doing really well. And I said, this is easy. So I bought Beverly, which was losing a lot of money. And what year was that? Uh, that was 2001. Yeah. And basically, just about the same time, basically, you know, Cambridge basically hit the, you know, dot coms were going out, NASDAQ crashed, people mm -hmm. didn't have money anymore, people were leaving there. So I had to learn basically how to run a business to hopefully just stay above water for a few years type thing. And then, you know, then, you know, it came back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then you had the 2008, 2009, basically went back down again. And now, fortunately, we're 
been on a good economic role um, as far as you know, people are working, they're making money, um, so the business is going really well again. But you have to prepare for basically for that next wave of things at all times. Because that's probably one of the first things people eliminate is that is that membership fee, right? I, I don't think it's the first thing they eliminate. If it's really imp if they're really if they're using the club and they get the benefit out of it, they're probably not going to eliminate. It. Interesting. You know, they might cut down a little bit on personal training if they mm -hmm. can't really afford it. Mm -hmm. um, they make those changes, um, but you know, I think most people, if they get into routine, they realize how important a priority the health is, and how that's actually, when you look at it, you know, it's a couple of dollars a day. It's probably better than sitting in that line at Dunkin' Donuts to get that coffee and the uh, egg and cheese sandwich on a croissant <laughs> or a bagel type thing that's going to cost you seven dollars. Yeah, and go the opposite way from you. So, I mean, part of what you have to do in a health club is you have to educate people a little bit to understand where they can make those changes that are going to make a health club really an affordable thing for them, or training an affordable thing for them, because that's what's going to change their lives. That extra, that extra, you know, pocketbook or <laughs> pair of shoes isn't going to change their life so much. It's I mean. so true <laughs> that like a material item, a, a thing looks good and it feels good when you get it, but then it just sits there and it can even become a burden, you know, because yes. you got to take care of it or you worry about it. But your physical health. Um, and your success is something that kind of gives you like a, a long-term happiness. Long-term happiness, and it gives you an energy inside, yes. right? Yes. You know, I, I know that when I'm like in 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 really good in a training mode and feeling fit and clothes fit good, you feel so like powerful. It, it, your mind right. is different. Your right. mind is is completely different. Right. You're walking out and you're going to your 25th high school graduation. You want to feel like well, I look better than most of those other guys did, and you feel good about that. Yeah. You yeah. do. I mean, it's just natural. Um, you know, but it's all about, also about just feeling good. I mean, you know, when you do exercise and you do the right amount, you're going to have less stress. You're going to sleep better at night. You have all those other things that make a huge difference because mm -hmm. that extra stress is also part of what puts the weight on. Yeah. Not sleeping yeah. it well. I mean, you know, all those things, they, it affects your mental clarity. So, I mean, there is a lot of benefits. I wish everybody really realized what the benefits were of exercise 100% because I think if they did, it's a little bit harder to just kind of stay lazy on it. Yeah, well, I'll tell you mm -hmm. something. The mega stuffed Oreos, they really good, feel good going down, but five minutes later, it is just ultimate regret uh, how, it's, of taking that choice instead of going out for a run or a walk. Right. And you come back and you feel like, like good tired and the, the endorphins running through your body. Um, so now, so you own Cambridge, all right? I want to ask you a question about yes. this because you told me, and I was kind of like wondering why. You went and you saw an opportunity to buy Beverly, yes. which was losing a lot of money. Yes. Why would you buy a club that's losing a lot of money? Um, well, a few things were going on at the time. At the time, basically, I didn't have really good landlords in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. I have phenomenal landlords right now. Yeah. And if I had that, I might not have even taken that chance. But it was also like, how long will I stay in this business? You know, I'm in my mid-40s. If I don't have this, what am I going to do? Who am I going to be? Yeah. You know, so I had a guy that I knew that was showing me other clubs. And I was actually living in the South Shore at the time. Um, he showed me the club in Hanover, which at the time, Hell Tracks, the same company that owned the Beverly Club, owned. And I looked at it. I didn't like the building a lot. It was making a little bit of money, but they had a really good GM that I knew there. You know, they had, you know, a, you know YMCA that was buying a huge property right near them. I didn't see really good things on the horizon for them, you know, with all the things that were going positive for the, for the building. Mm -hmm. Then I went up and looked at Beverly, and when I looked at that one, it was, you know, basically... The bones of it were really good. It was a really good building. It had a lot of good things about it. Um, you know, it was really ugly when I went into it. It was a green building with a red awning over it type mm -hmm. stuff and a final sign hanging off the side <laughs> of the wall. And I could see right from there, like, why would somebody go in and join that club if they get this postcard, which is what they use for postcards for all their clubs. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like that. And I went in and it was a little bit better, but not a lot. But I could see where it had lots of potential. It had a membership base already of some sort, and it was, you know, Cambridge was doing well enough. I felt I could go in there and turn it around. I wouldn't be making money overall, and not a lot, because my Cambridge income would go, would be put into Beverly, but it yeah. all comes in the same thing when you're doing your taxes at the end. And, like, if I can turn this around, then I have basically an end game plan for having that. And part of the thing I did was negotiate an offer, um, a deal with the real estate, people, people that own the property that didn't want to have them go bankrupt and own a health club they didn't want to manage yeah. to be able to 
sell me the property if I could turn it around within the five year period of time at an yeah. already pre agreed upon price. Yeah. So a lot of things kind of said, okay, if this goes right and this goes right and this goes right, then this is a really good move. But you had an opportunity. You had like a parachute if it didn't, right? Like you could, could you get it? Because you said you had like a five year plan. I had five year plan, but yeah. I was going to lose money for a few years, so I was still investing, but yeah. yeah. And it all turned out really well, fortunately. Once again, there was. There was some skill there, there were the right employees in place, mm -hmm. and was some, some luck there as well. How many racquetball courts did you say that place had? Uh, when, when it was built, it had 17. Yeah. When I purchased it, it had six. Yeah. Right away, it went down to three. Then basically, that's about six years ago, we went down to two because we turned one into a really large uh, youth activity center. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we could have more room to play and do things and more room to be able to watch them properly, you know, closer to the bathrooms and all that. It just made a lot more sense to make that move. And then the last two courts, basically, you know, it was kind of a dying sport. Much as I like to yeah. play, yeah. I realized that, you know, it served more purpose for more people if we change into something that would, you know, make the club better. Well, I remember in the early 80s, everybody was playing racquetball. My brother had two rackets. I want, I, the, in the early 80s, I was like in my early teens, I wanted to play so bad. And, and I, I did play as I got older, and it was, it was a lot of fun. But it's amazing how times change. Yes. There was no such thing as CrossFit back then. No, there wasn't. And now everywhere is CrossFit. People love CrossFit. Two of my original racquetball courts in my Cambridge club are now a CrossFit. It's Kendall yeah. Square CrossFit. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, I want one more thing. I noticed that when we were in Beverly, you had a lot of like separate areas for women. Yes. And that, that's, that's, that's nice because some, because it, it seems to me that it can be uncomfortable sometimes for women or, or just. Some women. So when I bought Beverly, I think Curves had just come out. Yeah. And Curves, you know, it was a place that was designed for women, more, actually probably more middle, middle aged women to go yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of a, you know, semi, you walk around, you do your circuit and you leave. And. In some senses, it was really good for the industry because it got women actually into exercising. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they didn't have all the things that women would really want long term. The equipment wasn't the state of the art that it is in most really nice health clubs. They didn't have a lot of really extra classes and things like that. So, I mean, we were getting some people because we had those things, but people, well, there were women we were not attracting because of the fact that we didn't have a woman's only area type thing and they weren't comfortable. So the first thing we did actually when we bought the club was put in basically about a, you know, 1,400 square foot, which is about the size of an average curve, if not bigger, um, center with basically all your strength things, a little functional area in the middle, and some cardio equipment so women don't have to go into the main club. But we tried to make it so it was very similar to the main fitness center so that they, they could go there without having any kind of a learning curve type yeah, thing, which, yeah. which was a really good business move for us. Mm -hmm. So there's a woman's section, women, women only. They can also go into the, uh, yeah. the, the co-ed section, yes. I guess, or better. So, so, but, but they have the, their own section yes. and the rest of the club. Right. Um, so now I noticed also there's a lot, you have a lot of amenities at the Beverly location. Yes. Which I thought was nice because people can go there and not just uh, work out, but uh, you know they can get a little snack. They can. Uh, they, there's even a, a salon in there. Right. We, <laughs> we have a full salon, soleil salon in there. Basically, there was a salon when I bought the club. It wasn't a really good fit the way they're running their business. There was smoking in there and things like that. So I had a six month window. So that was the end of that. And because of where it was financially, already losing money. It took about three years for us to decide what to do, and we put a salon in there, which we've increased the size of. Mm -hmm. So it's nice because we have, yeah, it gives the opportunity to have massage there. You know, a lot of women have their nails done there, their hair done there, and it's not a huge, huge profit center, but it does have a profit, and it also it's a great amenity for members in the club because they all get a discount in the salon, which is great. We put physical therapy in there, which we've taken over, and we own the physical therapy there, and we have four great physical therapists there. And that's great because if somebody has an issue with their shoulder or whatever, you know, basically we have the answers right there for them. And a lot of, a lot of business there comes from basically either members, um, you know, tweak their back, have yeah. a knee replacement, have a hip replacement. I mean, yeah. you know, it happens. Or, you know, have a skiing accident type thing. And they go through there, which is great for them because they can utilize the facility as well. And they also refer their friends and family because we get great people working there. So we have that there as well. We have a, uh, we put a Pilates reformer pl uh, studio in there as well, a little separate thing. So we have all these little separate businesses as part of the business type thing. So people can actually go for which things that they actually really need. Nice. Okay. So 
the, the, the uh, website for, for the Beverly Club? Uh, BeverlyAthletic.com. All right, check it out because it's beautiful. And then CambridgeAthletic.com for the Correct. Cambridge store. All right, and Cambridge, we just did an over a million dollar renovation about two years ago. I mean, it's a beautiful facility when you walk in. Yeah. It's not quite as large as Beverly, but it's about 30,000 square feet. So for City Club, it's one of the bigger city clubs. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have the pool. That's probably the biggest difference, but it has great trainers there as well. It has, um, you know, it has the CrossFit is part of the club, so you can buy that, purchase that separately. Um, so not everybody has CrossFit membership because CrossFit's more small group training, so there's an extra cost for that type thing. But you know, really good trainers there, and it's a very, very big part of the whole corporate center down in Kendall Square area. All right. So you 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 know you run some you're a very successful business. Um, but what makes you the happiest? Are you the happiest when uh, you look at your bottom line and go, oh, that's great? Or are you the happiest when you see someone who comes in and they're 150 pounds overweight and you see them a year and a half later and they're fit and they're happy? Uh, I mean, I know both make you happy. What really makes you the happiest though in this business? I think it makes me happy both of those things, but also just all the people that we make that change in our lives for. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I mean, obviously, first rule in any business is you have to find a way to be profitable. Yeah. I don't need to make a million dollars. Mm -hmm. I just need to be profitable enough to live the lifestyle I live, which is, yeah, not all that high. Mm -hmm. So basically, I save money every year. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing to do is to make that difference. It's really important for me to see employees basically come out of college and go from basically, you know, trying to figure out what to do to working for my business and all, all of a sudden be making $70,000 a year as a successful personal trainer mm -hmm. and changing people's lives. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's all the, all the things that we do do um, on a regular basis. Yes, when you see someone who basically loses 150 pounds, is that an extra like, wow, we did that. Yes, we, we love having members and the testimonials they have. But you don't need to lose 150 pounds to get all the benefits of basically getting out of your funk, your depression, to be able to feel better about yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all those things come to anybody that's really looking for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to look bad to or feel or be fat to join a health club. You know, you're going to get a lot of other benefits. I mean, you can get the appearance things. You can have great appearance just naturally. A lot of people do. Yeah. You know, but you know, as far as you know, your stress release and your health and all those things. Your flexibility, being able to be a you know, high-performing athlete, all those things come from health fitness. So it's being able to deliver all those things to people that want to put their effort into it. We'll put our effort into it as well and help them achieve that. That's excellent, Ed. I really want to thank you for being on the show. Thank you very much. And, you I know, enjoyed and, it. And thank you for uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule to Thanks. come down here and share with us and help us. You know, Like I said, we started out talking about being worried. So you get a free month trial. So I All want right. you to come in and take a month. Yeah. You know, and I'll give you a couple sessions with a trainer. I want you to see the difference it can make as far as, you know, and if it's not that convenient for you, you can find another health club, but you can use me to get started. That sounds fantastic. Sound All right, like I appreciate it. Great. Okay. All right, Thanks, excellent. Matt. I appreciate okay. it. All right, I want to thank you for watching the Matt Lagore Show. You can check me out on YouTube, The Matt Lagore Show. You can check me out on Facebook, The Matt Lagore Show on Facebook. You become my friend. You can never have too many friends. All right, we'll see you again next time. See ya.